Hi guys, happy new year! And I know it's a little bit late to say that, but still, welcome to my first video this year. And before we start with the topic, I wanted to take a minute to say thank you for a few things. And you can do this exercise with me too. I promise it's just the first time this year. In my next videos, I will obviously not do that. So first of all, I wanted to thank the English language because the knowledge of it lets me create these videos and you guys knowing English, you can understand my videos so we can create value for each other. Secondly, I wanted to say thank you to all of you watching me and learning from here because there's already 3,000 of us, which is incredible. And thank you for all your support and faith in me, even though I was not really producing videos lately. Uh, I promise I'm gonna change this year. And a few more things that I wanted to say is that, first of all, I'm going to create timestamps under my videos. Uh, so if you are not interested in the intro, you can just skip to the topic that interests you. No shame in that. Everybody is here for a specific thing. And the last thing is that even though I know English, it's not perfect and I cannot talk really fast. So if you find my video a little bit slow, you can always go ahead and do 1.5 times speed or 2x speed. So no shame in that either. Actually, that applies to my last video about aerospace classes. So if you want to watch it, you can just put two times speed and it will be okay. <laughs> All right, so now let's start actually talking about the topic of this video. And if you see from the title, you might think, okay, if we are talking about the correct lift theory, then what's the incorrect one? And it turns out that there is no incorrect lift theory. It's just that no theory on itself can explain everything that happens with the wing or with the, with the aircraft while it's flying and generating lift. So let's talk about the two main theories out there that are popular nowadays. So remember we talked about lift a few videos back and some people commented under that video that that theory was wrong. But in reality, it's not entirely wrong. So remember what that principle of lift generation was based on? It was based on Bernoulli's principle. So what does Bernoulli's principle stand for? Well, we know that if the fluid velocity increases, the pressure decreases. So as we remember, when the wing is moving through the air, or the airfoil is moving through the air, because the air becomes faster above the wing, the pressure decreases above the wing. So we get this pressure difference between the lower surface and upper surface of the airfoil. And even though some people say that I was wrong or the theory was wrong, Bernoulli's principle actually holds. So if we put the aircraft in the wind tunnel or we put pressure measuring devices on the wings, we will see in reality and measure the pressure, we will see that the pressure above the wing is actually lower in real life. But remember that we said no theory on itself can explain why lift is generated. So what are the limitations of Bernoulli's principle? So first of all, remember when we talked about the lift theory based on Bernoulli's principle, we assumed that two air particles are going to separate around the airfoil and meet again at the trailing edge. In reality, it's not true though. Uh, so it was measured in the wind tunnel that the upper particle is actually upper air molecule is actually much faster than the lower one, maybe two times faster. So this theory was called equal transit theory because we assumed that two air molecules would travel the same distance, but in different, uh, uh, they would travel at the same time, but different distances. That's why it's called equal transit, but actually it doesn't work because the top air molecule is gonna be much faster. So that is one thing that is not true about Bernoulli's principle, lift generation theory. Second limitation of this theory is that it cannot explain to us 
why some aircraft can fly inverted. Because I was inverted. <coughs> which would make the airfoil the opposite, but it would still fly. And some structures such as uh, hang gliders or even paper planes can fly for a short period of time, even though they had flat wings or symmetric airfoils. Those things can still fly and Bernoulli's principle cannot explain it. What matters there is that we get the correct angle of attack and the hang glider, for example, is gonna fly. If we get the correct angle of attack for a paper plane, it's gonna fly further. So this is a second limitation of the lift theory based on Bernoulli's. And lastly, Bernoulli's principle doesn't explain why air molecules or water molecules behave differently than let's say people or cars. So imagine you are driving on the highway and there are a lot of cars around you. You are all going pretty fast, but then the highway becomes more narrow. And what happens in real life? Well, we'll get stuck in a traffic jam because what happens is that people slow down as we meet something more narrow than it was before. But air molecules and water they speed up instead. So imagine you are coming out of the movie theater and instead of being in this person jam, everybody's just moving so fast that it's even better for everybody. <laughs> so this phenomenon cannot be explained yet. And we need to study air and its properties or other fluids like air to explain why it happens, why they change the pressure and they become faster when we get something more narrow. All right, so now let's move on to the second lift theory that exists. And we have not talked about it before on my channel, but I will give you a short uh, review of it. Now, the second lift theory is based on Newton's third law. And I'll give you a few seconds to try to remember it. What does it state? Newton's third law is about action and reaction. So if we have one force acting downwards, then if it's in touch with another body, this body is gonna experience a force that is acting upwards. So if we talk about the aircraft, when the aircraft is moving through the air, the air that's coming in cannot go straight, right? So it's kind of pushed downwards as the aircraft is flying forward. And because that flow of air, that mass of air is pushed downwards, uh, something has to counteract that. And so we get this force on the aircraft that's pushing it upwards, which is basically called lift in this theory. And there's more detailed explanation of the second lift generation theory, but we'll talk about it in a next video. All right. So this theory can explain a lot of things. Uh, it, it is more suitable and more universal than Bernoulli's principle. This theory holds for inverted aircraft, for flat airfoils, and so on. So it's considered more universal and applicable. And it's considered more solid. But still, <laughs> it cannot explain why the top of the airfoil gets lower pressure. And you know what's interesting is that as soon as the aircraft stops, the pressures become equal again on both sides of the airfoil or the wing. So nowadays we analyze the airflow around the aircraft with CFD simulations and solutions to Navier-Stokes equations, which take into account the real viscosity of air. And these simulations and solutions to equations can help us um, des design and predict the properties of modern aircraft. But in reality, all of these tools are just helping us to mathematically model what happens in reality with the air. So there is no one theory that will explain fully what happens physically around the airflow and why lift is generated. So recently, an aerodynamicist from Boeing, Doug McLean, uh, I think he's a former CFD engineer from Boeing, uh, he wrote a book about aerodynamics and he tried to come up with this 
a full explanation of lift. And in his book, he has a chapter about how lift is generated, about lift theory, and he tried to explain it in such a way that ordinary people can understand it. So here is the basics of his theory. So first of all, he says that when the aircraft is flying through the air, well, we know that the air kind of, we think of the air as a continuous medium or continuous uh, thing, so that when the airfoil is inside that field of air, uh, the air stream is gonna bend around the airfoil and that will create different pressure distributions. So basically, in his theory, he has this term called pressure field distribution, which is basically because air has to bend around the airfoil. And secondly, he goes back to Newton's third law and Bernoulli's principle. So his theory includes four components. First one, as we talked about, is a downwards push of the air. So that creates a reaction that pushes the wing up. Second thing that happens is that the airflow increases its speed above the wing. And third and fourth components are regions of higher and lower pressure around the airfoil. But what's interesting about his theory is that he says that these four components cannot exist one without another. So basically it's, it's a synergy of four components. And as soon as the aircraft stops, there's no more phenomenon like that. So the way that he explains it is based on Newton's second law. And remember what it says? It says that the net force is equal to mass times acceleration of an object. And what's interesting is that because we have these different pressures acting on the air around the airfoil, it creates the acceleration or the change in velocity of the air around the airfoil. But vice versa, or the opposite thing that happens, is because the aircraft is flying, it has acceleration and velocity is changing its direction, then that is why we have this pressure distribution. So we kind of have to have a net force if we have an acceleration. So that's an interesting point of view in trying to explain the theory of lift. And another theory that tries to explain why we have a region of lower pressure above the airfoil is that supposedly the molecules are sticking to the airfoil because if they were separating, then we would actually get vacuum there. And that vacuum uh, pulls those molecules back again to the airfoil, to the surface of the wing. But still, we can come up with counterexamples to that theory. And the counterexample one is that sometimes we get a situation when the airflow separates from the airflow and we actually have uh, a turbulence or vacuum there. This theory of, about vacuum is still not uh, fully acceptable to explain why we have lower region, lower pressure region above the wing. So, in order to conclude this video about lift theories and all this confusion and uh, arguments between two groups of people, uh, one group believes in Bernoulli's principle, second group believes in Newton's third law, action-reaction. Uh, obviously, we go more with uh, Newton's third law, and I will explain it more in the next video, which will be pretty short. Uh, so, where does it leave us now? Well, we can say that we understand the process below the wing or below the airfoil, more or less, because Newton's third law can explain it well, and we even use it everywhere to model the lift. But we still don't know what, why we have lower pressure region above the wing. No theory can fully explain it. So if you want to become a researcher in aerodynamics and come up with your own theory and prove it, make it universal, then go ahead and do that. And I will end this, this video with uh, John Anderson's words. 
and you remember who he is, right? He wrote a, a lot of textbooks on aerodynamics. So John Anderson says that there is no simple explanation to why lift happens, why lift is generated. And he says there is no one single sentence explanation to that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it informative. And whenever you discuss lift with somebody now, you can be informed and knowledgeable about it. Basically, there are two lift theories. One is based on Bernoulli's principle, but it cannot explain a few phenomena. Second one is based on Newton's third law, which can explain a lot of things, but still it cannot explain why we have a region of lower pressure above the airflow. So basically there is no universal explanation for lift. And this is where we stand in modern world with aerodynamics. Even though with all this technology and with all this research, <laughs> we still did not come up with one theory, one single theory that can explain everything. So I hope you found this video interesting and I'll see you next week. Bye.